The car feels insane now. It feels crazy faster than it did before. Those two parts definitely took care of my low boost issue. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. So today should be really, really rad because between the Porsche and the BMW, I've not really ever installed any performance mods on either of the cars. But what we're gonna try to accomplish today is taking care of the fact that my car has a low boost problem. If you happen to watch last week's video where I installed the auto meter boost gauge, uh, I installed that not only to get a better understanding of what the car is doing, but also to confirm that I am in fact having an issue with the car. And so what we're gonna try to accomplish today is replace a couple of parts that I think are the culprits for why I'm having low boost issues. And assuming those parts take care of the problem, I should see a pretty significant gain in the car or in the performance of the car after the fact. So what I'm gonna do today is explain the parts that we're replacing, explain what they do and why I think they're causing the issue and then get them installed in the car and go for a, a drive and just see how it, see if I'm able to make the proper amount of boost. Um, after last week's video, I actually posted about it on a Facebook group I'm in. You may have seen it, you may have found my channel through that group, but uh, I explained what I did, which was install the boost gauge, but then I had a few people talk about their experience in installing boost gauges in their car, but I had one person in particular, which it actually worked out perfect. He showed me a video, or he linked a video in that post of his gauge setup, which is pretty funny. He had a bunch of gauges installed in like a wine box, but the important part of the video is the fact that he had not only the same exact gauge that I have, but his 944 turbo was making around 10 pounds of boost. And again, if you happen to miss last week's video, my car is only making four pounds of boost. So there should be a lot of room left on the table for what this car is capable of. And hopefully the parts that we're gonna install today will take care of that issue. So let's get into talking about these parts, what they do, and uh, eventually get them installed in the car. Here we go. So here we have the two parts that we're gonna be replacing in my Porsche. This right here is called your diverter valve and this is your cycling valve. The purpose of your diverter valve is to reroute excess boost pressure back into the intake system. And it does that by when you let off the throttle, a small amount of vacuum is created and a vacuum line is attached at this end and it'll pull the diaphragm and spring up and allow boost pressure to go from here back into the intake system. And it does that so you don't accidentally send high pressure back into the turbo or back into some of the lines and blow some of the lines out. This on the other hand, your cycling valve, the main purpose for this part is to basically control your boost level. Now it doesn't do it in the same way that a wastegate does, but what it, what this part's function is, is when your car gets to a certain boost level and the computer recognizes where you're at, it will electronically activate the solenoid in here and reroute some exhaust gases back into the, I wanna say the wastegate to allow it to open sooner. So basically it prevents you from over boosting. The reason I think this part has failed is because during my research, I found an article on Pelican parts actually talking about just replacing this part but it went into talking about how if your car is only making 1.2 bar of boost, this part is highly suspected to be the reason why. And in case you didn't catch last week's video, that's exactly where my car is uh, maxing out at when we're driving it around. It's at 1.2 bar of boost on the gauge on the dash. I'm not able to test this in the same way that we could test this to confirm that it's failed, but I have uh, reason to believe that this part is no longer any good. This part, uh, there's a quick and easy way to tell if the diaphragm in there has failed. Uh, what you could do is you could attach a hose like I have here and try to pull air through here. And if you're able to pull air through, then you know that the diaphragm on the inside has failed. And I've done that on this one. I know that the diaphragm on the inside is no good. And on this part, the brand new part, I'm not able to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you what that sounds like and then we'll get these installed in the car and see if they take care of our issue. Before I toss these parts in, I actually remember that I wanna show you guys what these sound like when uh, to tell if one has failed versus if one's good. So like I was saying, let me see if you can hear this. If you were, <laughs> oh my gosh. If you're able to hear that, that's air being pulled through this top part and it's not supposed to be able to do that because the diaphragm here on the inside is supposed to seal that these sides off from each other. 
or f rather from this side. You're not supposed to be able to pull air through until the vacuum pulls it up the diaphragm and the spring to allow air to flow through here. Now this is what a good one sounds like. And if you were able to hear that noise, that's me pulling enough vacuum to be able to lift that diaphragm and spring up to allow air to flow from the one side to the bottom to the intake. So that's just a quick little test. Um, it's really simple. You don't even actually have to take this out of your car. You could pull the vacuum line off while it's installed and just, again, attach a little hose and try that. And if you could pull air through, then you know it's failed. Now we're gonna install these in the car. I'll show you where they go and then see if we fixed our issue. All right, so here we are in the engine bay. If you see, this is the hole where the diverter valve sits normally. That uh, boot right here goes to the low pressure side or rather the intake side of the turbo. And this is the vacuum line that's gonna go on top. I found it easiest to just remove the whole hose that uh, mounts to, I want to say the intake piping, I don't know if that comes from the intercooler, but to take this off altogether and then install is obviously just the reverse, pop it in, screw the clamps down and then install the vacuum line up here and then that's it man. This is super, super simple. Um, like I was just saying in the last clip, if you wanted to test this part in the car, you just pop this hose off and then you'd have to get down here and like attach something and just see if you could pull air through. But really easy. I'm gonna get this installed and then we'll move over to the underneath the intake and install the cycling valve. So here we go. All right, it's a little hard to see, but the cycling valve actually goes right there on that little plate. It sits inside of there, kind of underneath the intake manifold. Now, the technical article on Pelican Parts will say that in order to replace your cycling valve, you actually have to remove the entire intake manifold, but if you're careful and you're patient and you have the proper tools, you could definitely get this out without removing the intake manifold. Obviously, I took mine out without removing this. All I had to do was remove the banjo fitting that went right here, and then just carefully with a long screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, get down there and loosen up the clamps and kind of pry the hoses off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this part installed. Um, it's really simple. There's only two bolts. You can kind of see there's one hole right there and then another one at the bottom. Kind of hard to tell, but there are only two bolts that uh, bolt this cycling valve to that plate down there. And then there's just three lines that route to it. Um, they're pretty easy. You can't really mix them up. So again, I'm gonna get this installed and then we'll go for a test drive and see how it runs. All right, everything is finally installed. All the clamps are tight. The cycling valve is installed and hooked back up. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and take this for a test drive and see if we corrected the issue. All right, man, I just got back from my test drive and as you were able to see, dude, the car feels insane. It's now making like nine, 10, 11 pounds of boost when before, if you remember, it was only making four pounds of boost. So dude, the car feels crazy fast now. Um, I mean, obviously compared to like new cars and everything, like it's, it's, it's not fast compared to that, but for me and for what I'm used to with this car, it's insanely quicker than it was before and so, Dude, I am stoked, man. Like, when the boost comes on, I don't know. Like, my, my BMW being a turbocharged car, I mean, it feels pretty quick when the boost comes on, but it's it's still a huge, heavy car. And I'm just, I'm so shocked with what I thought was supposed to be how the car felt, the Porsche, how it was supposed to feel versus how it actually feels now that the car is building the right amount of boost. Um, I, I, I'm blown away, man. I, I mean, as you could tell, I don't even have really a lot of words to say, but um, yeah, man, I'm stoked. Uh, I will say this, uh, on my test drive, I noticed that it's not consistently making that much boost. Uh, sometimes it gets stuck around like four or five, sometimes it'll get to like eight, and then sometimes I can get it to nine, 10, 11 pounds of boost. So I have a feeling there's still something going on with the car, but 
I'm excited because we're definitely one step closer to getting the car to run the way it's supposed to run. And so also, I mean, for 150 bucks, I think this is the best like bang for buck performance gain I'll ever get out of the car. And I know that isn't technically right because these cars are supposed to feel this way, but considering how long I've had the car now and was used to how it ran before, to have it running how it is running now, I mean, it feels like a performance gain to me, man. I don't know, you, you call it whatever you want, but I'm stoked. Um, hopefully, if you watch the video and you're having a similar issue with your 944 Turbo, I would say probably start there because I think other than those two parts, you're probably looking at something to do with the wastegate if you're not getting uh, proper boost pressure. Uh, but for 150 bucks, I don't, I don't, I, I think it's worth replacing anyways. I don't know how old those parts were. I don't know how long they've been in the car. I don't know if they've ever been replaced. So, I mean, that's a, it's pretty cheap as far as parts go for this platform. So I would definitely start there. Hopefully my explanations, you know, at least gave you a rough idea for how the system works and what they're supposed to do, the parts. But yeah, man, um, I'm really, really excited. I'm excited to keep digging into this car and keep, you know, chipping away at getting it to run the way it's supposed to run. But uh, for now, uh, in regards to this video, I think we're gonna wrap it up. If you stuck around to the end, man, I appreciate you so much. Um, I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.